Stampers, it's Christy with Stampin' Texas. Are you ready to create this adorable spring card? I just love the colors and the combination of yellow and black. I wanted to also use this card to share a technique with you. It's a chalkboard technique, and you'll notice on the black, there are little white, um, looks like chalkboard on the background, but I'm going to show you how to create that technique using this card. So, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to emboss and do your centerpiece here, and then we'll get to the extra embellishments and things. To do heat embossing, you're going to need a Versamark ink pad. This is a must. It's a very wet, moist ink that'll grab the powder. You're going to need your embossing buddy, and I've got a piece of black cardstock that we're going to stamp on today. The sentiment that we're going to stamp comes from the Feel Good stamp set in the Spring Catalog. So if you haven't checked that out yet, this is a great stamp set. You can find the Spring Catalog through my website. So I've got my stamp ready to go. First, actually, before I even ink that up, I'm going to take my embossing buddy and I'm going to rub it all over the background, all over the paper. The embossing buddy keeps the embossing powder from sticking where you don't want it to stick. This is also used as part of the chalkboard technique after we're done bossing because you'll notice that white powder there. You can actually use that as part of the chalkboard technique. So let me set that aside. We're going to ink this up. I'm going to stamp it right to the middle. And I prefer stamping on a big square like this so then when we cut it out I can set the frame it exactly where I want it. I'm going to pull my white embossing powder into view, and I keep all my embossing powders stored like this in their own separate container, and it's really handy and easy to use, as you'll see in just a moment. I'm going to sprinkle this with the embossing powder. And just shake it around, and then it's nice because you can just put it all back in the container. Tap it on the back. And now you're going to need your heat tool, and I'm going to heat that up. I'll show you a little bit, and then I've already got one ready to go, but let me just show you what it looks like when it turns. Can you see how that gets really shiny? And you can tell that this side's not done yet, but I've done the right-hand side. So what you'll do is heat emboss the entire thing, and then you're going to get the framelits, the Ovis collection of framelits. I use the framelits all the time. And the size that you're going to need, I pulled out already, but I believe this is like the fourth one, one, two, three, four. Yep, that's where this one goes. That's the size that I used. And you use the framelits with the Big Shot die cutting machine. So once this was heated up, I line it up like this and run it through my Big Shot. Now, if you've never used framelits with a Big Shot before, be sure to check out my video on cutting things with the framelits. I've got a video on that. So here's one I've already done. It's all embossed, ready to go. Now let's put on the chalkboard effect. Uh, to do that, you can use two different things. You can go back over and use your embossing buddy again to get some of that powder from the buddy on there. Or I like to do the white craft ink and just get you a little sponge and you can go as light or as dark as you want but the idea is just get a little bit of white and go around it like this see how it's getting the white ink on there and you just want it to look like you've erased something on a chalkboard all right so now that we have that that's pretty good. I'll go with it. Let's go ahead and get our card base in. Now you can do your card base folds two different ways. We've got this kind of fold or this kind. This is just an eight and a half by five and a half, scored and folded. And now my piece of designer paper. This is from the Parker's Patterns designer paper. And I have cut this to, let me get you the measurement, two and a half by five. And in order to get this little um, banner, this is a kind of a shortcut way of doing a banner. You just go in like that, and now when you cut on the corners, you have kind of a guide you're going towards. 
and then we'll do the same on this side. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and stick that down with some snail adhesive. Line that up. And with this little guy, I have found this cute little punch. This is from the Itty Bitties Punch Pack, and I've already got a couple of them punched. All you need is a little scrap of Daffodil Delight. Oh, I don't think I said the, the color of our cardstock today. It's the Daffodil Delight. And so we've got two of those. Now let's use our scissors, total of three. We're going to pick those little rhinestones up and place them on the center. Like this. And what's really nice is you can just use a little glue dot on the backs of those to adhere them. But let's go ahead and put this on the card with a dimensional. Take a couple of those. Like so, coming together. And I'm actually going to move this down a little bit further. This one, you'll notice the tails of my ribbon kind of went long. So we'll just put those around. Isn't that cute? I just really like the yellow and black color together. I think it's so classy. All right, now for my ribbon. Okay, got my ribbon. Let's make this cute bow, and I'm gonna show you the way I make a bow. First, I keep my ribbon on the spool, and then I do the little bunny ear technique, where I just make two loops. I'm gonna cross them over and bring one through. This is a really nice way of doing a bow because you get a good bow every time and then you can kind of play with it to get the size you want. I think that'll be pretty good. All right, just like that. So let's cut that. Good old glue dots again. Let's put a few glue dots on it. Well, if I can find them, there they are. You just need a couple glue dots on the back and you're going to stick that on top. Now you may be wondering how I did this part of the ribbon where it, I don't know what the word is, where it kind of goes to the side right where you want it. All I did was add another glue dot to the end of it and then I did it where I wanted it and there you'll get it to stay and you can make it as really or you can leave it you don't have to stick it down if you don't want to but I just like the way that looked and that is it there you go you've got some really cute spring cards using a fun technique and for more project ideas and information be sure to visit my website at stampintx.com thanks so much